G'day everybody, Max right here and I've got a massive Bitcoin update for you with everything going on in the world. I have massively upgraded my Bitcoin prediction here for the end of 2021. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I made a prediction video, a uh, very famous, uh, I think uh, April of last year, I think it was, um, where I think the price of Bitcoin was around three, four thousand dollars something like that. And I called for over a hundred thousand dollars by the end of 21. Uh, I also called for about fifteen thousand uh, dollars next month. That's at the time of the halving, so May of this year. Um, and don't think we're going to hit that, but 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 anyway, pretty close. Like I I, I didn't I knew this year was going to be a, a whatever year. It's next year. It's the next year that's where all the magic happens after the halving. That's when the magic happens. But because of what's going on with the the, the finally the popping of the financial bubble that's all been all over the world for the last decade, and because of the coronavirus, everything else. New, I'm going to give a new price target here in this video and explain my reasoning, of course, as I always do. So guys, if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel, like it. Um, I don't charge for anything, uh, any of this stuff, so please, I don't ask for Patreon or any of the donations, so please support the channel and let me know if you've been loving the content that's coming out in the comments below, because I've made a lot of really cool video. Is In fact, if you guys haven't been paying attention, the first two links in this description have been two videos that I put out the last month. And it just explains everything that's going on, all the stuff that's gonna happen over the next two years and how to play it so that you can position yourself financially to just be in the way of a tsunami of wealth. So I'll put those two videos in the top link of the description. Please watch them and let me know how you, if you enjoyed them. And a little bit of it goes into how, which asset classes are gonna move and which, and first, real estate, stock market, um, gold, precious metals, Bitcoin, all the different things, right? And I teach you some just incredibly basic, simple economics, which unfortunately, although it's basic, you just don't hear anywhere else. So if economics intimidates you or you think you don't like it, there's a very good reason. Everything they teach you at college and high school is just complete crap. It's wrong, it's deliberately designed to confuse you and uh, no wonder nobody likes it. Uh, the way I teach it, trust me, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to make sense to you because it's in, in fact super simple. I don't use any big words and you don't have to memorize a bunch of falsehoods like you do if you go to university. Just things that aren't true. Here, memorize these things. So please check those out because it, we, it would it help, it help you out considerably if you, uh, if you have that understanding about what's going on. So Bitcoin update, let's see it. I want to talk about this. Uh, there's a funnel I've been drawing in the last couple of videos. It looks something like this. And uh, what, I was, what I'm explaining here, I'm just going to recap it really fast, is we have the stock market. We have the real estate market. Stock market already started its crash. Real estate market crash coming soon. Um, we have the car market, the, the, the uh, student loan bubble. There's, there's just bubbles lining up here, all right? Just, the bubbles are lining up to be popped. They're all here. When they, ex when they pop, they have to go somewhere. And what I predicted um, several years ago was that where they would go is the US dollar. The perceived safe haven, the first stop will be cash. Just get out of cash. And the US dollar is the cleanest dirty shirt uh, in the neighborhood. So I think I've mixed my metaphors there, but um, the US dollar is perceived as the safe haven among fiat currencies. So when everything is just um, shitting the bed, yeah, I can say that. When everything's shitting the bed, people are going to run to US dollars. And that has been the best performer in the last like, four months or so. So as, as I predicted, but it's not going to stay the safe haven for long. There are cracks in all fiat currencies and definitely the US dollars. And at some point we are going to see, so we see all of that wealth pour into US dollars as a safe haven. As a result, US dollar is going to get very, very strong in the intermediate. The next step was when all that wealth pours out of there into something else, the something else I believe is going to be gold, precious metals more accurately, I got nothing against silver, and uh, and Bitcoin, BTC. And I should be a little bit more generous to myself here and say cryptocurrency, but no, in the next year or two, it's st it'll still be Bitcoin. Um, and then eventually, I think we might see some issues with gold and I think Bitcoin will overtake gold as the clear standout safe haven for citizens to protect themselves. So eventually down here, it just goes all Bitcoin. And so you will eventually see all this wealth flow into this uh, asset class, US dollars, it'll get bigger. Then this much tinier amount of, um, of wealth out there in gold and Bitcoin, wealth will pour into there. So the price of those things will skyrocket and then eventually just Bitcoin in and of itself. So I wanna talk a little bit about, and this ink is running out, so I'm gonna change pens here. Um, I wanna talk about some of the trigger points 
that might happen here. So, okay, we've already had the first tr trigger point. It was uh, COVID-19. It was the trigger that popped the stock market bubble. That's going to cascade through a whole bunch of other industries. We have that issue. Now we're into believing that fiat currencies is the place to be and US dollar specifically. What is going to break that paradigm and cause money to flow out? I believe we are going to see here in the next two years, I believe it's more likely than not that we will see a bail in and it's mostly from a major Western country, the bail in of a major bank, right? And I believe it's most likely to happen in Europe. So there's because of all of this business up here and the, the popping of this financial bubble over the next couple of years, I firmly believe we are going to see banks um, collapse and go insolvent. In fact, we've already seen one happen, but that's going to start cascading and more and more things are going to happen. Now, in most of the countries, it's the, the, the politicians can take the coward's way out and just print money and make the bank um, um, solvent again. And they can reliquify the bank by just printing up cash and, and giving it to them. In Europe, that's significantly harder. In Europe, um, you've got, let's say the bank of Spain, a uh, major bank in Spain collapses. And they, well, we need a bail, uh, we need a bail out. Just, you know, European Union prints some money and give it to us. All the other member countries have to agree to bail out that bank and it's significantly harder. Hence, in 2013, when Cyprus went, uh, two banks in Cyprus went belly up, we saw uh, the bail in. If you're not familiar with this, what happened was uh, one Saturday morning, the two, the two biggest banks in Cyprus closed their doors, didn't open for three more weeks. You couldn't go online, you couldn't walk into a branch, you did not have access to money. The whole country was without money, or if you had money in those, all the customers of those banks had no access to their money for two weeks. Then. When the banks reopened, what the bureaucrats had decided because they were insolvent, because the European Union was not willing to bail them out, they did a bail-in. Everybody's bank account got chopped in half. If you had a million dollars in the bank account, you, three weeks later, it said $500,000 when you logged in. Now you've just watched your bank account get chopped in half, so they allowed you to keep half of your money. Um, what, is the, what is the first thing you want to do with the rest of your money? Get it the hell out, right? Which would have caused another bank run, which would have been a problem. So obviously they were smart enough to think of that. You were only allowed to take cash out at the rate of 150 euros a day. Think of it. You can have you know, your $10 million in there one day, gets chopped in half to $5 million, and then you're going to pull out 150 euros a day. Okay? So that is, that is the bail in. That's what happened in Cyprus. I believe we are going to see a bail in here again, most likely in Europe in the next two years. The bail in is going to be the wake up call that fiat currencies are not safe, either via bail in or by um, inflation and, um, and bailouts. The market's going to figure out that the US dollar and fiat currencies are not safe. And that is going to be one of the major triggers that pushes people into, ah, I get it. I've got to go into gold and Bitcoin. So that's going to get us here. Now that I reckon here, this is going to happen. This bailing is going to happen sometime here in the next two years. At this point, I think sometime it may take several years longer. At some point, what we're going to see is a nationalization of gold in again, some major country around the world. So to cast your mind back to the Great Depression, Roosevelt says, guys, gold is now illegal. Citizens are not allowed to own gold. You must sell it back to the, the federal government at X price. When everybody sold back their gold, he readjusts the price of gold, and doubles it, and all that wealth got stolen from the people. And the people realize I'm not allowed to have gold and gold is easily um, sens censorable? No, it's easily censored. Thank you. It's easily censored. Meaning, um, if you have a big pile of gold you know, in a vault in your home or whatever, and it's outlawed, someone comes in, they sees the gold. There's nowhere to hide. You, you, uh, you've, you've got it. You, um, you are going to jail. You have violated the law. And gold, you know, the men with guns will come and find you. And people don't have the stomach for that. Bitcoin. Can you can remember Bitcoin in your head? Do you have any Bitcoin? No. I'm remembering a passphrase in my head and I've got access to tens of millions of dollars. It's because of that concept. At some point, some, some major Western country, gold will be, what are we going to call this? Outlawed. And then we are going to see a flight to Bitcoin. And I'll give myself a little bit of room here because we could be three, four, five, six, seven, eight years away from this. So by that stage, I'm going to be uh, generous to myself and say cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin. Right now, I think Bitcoin's in this next little wave, it's going to be Bitcoin, not the alts. 
Um, but five, six years ago from now, it may be an alt, not Bitcoin. I'll give myself the flexibility on that. So I hope that kind of gives you an understanding of the major trigger points that are going to happen that are going to force this funnel because this is unstable, guaranteed. Um, and it, I think it could be excessive bailouts from all the different countries in the world, but a major trigger point is going to be a bail in most likely, I think, in Europe. So with all of this happening, and it depends how fast it happens, but if we see a bail in of a major European bank, Deutsche Bank would be the, like the biggest thing possible, but some of the other majors, it could be Spain, could be Italy, could be lots of different banks that are just waiting to collapse. If we see a bail-in um, and people's bank accounts get chopped in half, you will see the price of Bitcoin go absolutely ballistic, as you will gold. Gold will go parabolic in, those, in that stage. These two are going to be great because this huge amount of wealth flows into here, that is forced to expand, and then flows into here, that it forces to expand, and then all three of these eventually have to jump into here and you've got quadrillions of dollars trying to get into Bitcoin where there is only 21 million of them and you're going to see the price of Bitcoin go mental. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this out. I think we, we got this covered. Why Now, I'm going to upgrade my, my Bitcoin price um, from 100,000 by the end of 2021 to at least 300 and I would probably say 500,000. Um, by the end of 2021. Now that is the most bold and ridiculous prediction I've ever made, by the way. And I've made a fair few of them, and they've all come true. But the, a move to 500,000 um, is, is, is really, really obscene in such a short amount of time by the end of 2021. But I think it's gonna be facilitated by that bail-in. Without the bail-in, I don't think we can hit $500,000 per Bitcoin. I wanna be crystal clear on that. But I believe we are more likely than not of seeing a, a bail-in in a major bank in Europe. Hence my prediction, okay? Now let's talk a little bit more about Bitcoin price. I wanna talk about um, the changing hands. Uh, so there's this concept in Bitcoin, you can check out how many wallets have more than a thousand Bitcoin in them. And a graph, if these are the halvings, and this is time of course, as time goes on, these are the halvings, what we notice is that the strong hands, wealthy people ac accumulate Bitcoin, they're in the know, at the time of the halving and for the following year or so. And then um, they, they, the smart hands start to sell and the masses get in. And so the number of wallets with more than a thousand coins in it, people are cashing out, taking their profits, buying their Lamborghinis, the number of hands, so this axis is the, the number of hands with a thousand plus uh, wallets, with a thousand plus Bitcoin in it. The number of those um, big wallet holders goes down in this dip. Okay, and then the strong hands start to accumulate again in preparation for the next halving. That's what we've seen in the past, right? And it looks a little something like that. Okay, what we, we are seeing this play out again, right? If we call the next halving here, this has bottomed out and we are well and truly on our way back up with the strong hands. So the price is set by these strong hands and weak hands right now. So right now we have strong hands trying to accumulate Bitcoin that is putting upward pressure on the price. Simultaneously, what you have is what's going on in the rest of the world is that the weak hands, people who were just speculating but don't have a lot, didn't have good jobs, didn't have a lot of wealth behind them, they, they overextended themselves, they over leveraged themselves, they bet on Bitcoin, it didn't happen fast enough and oh my God, now I've got to, I've got to sell uh, to, to feed my family or to you know, balance my portfolio or whatever. Because of what has happened with uh, Corona-19 and the destruction of the economy, the definition of a weak hand has exploded. The number of people without jobs, the number of people who can't make their payments, the number of uh, business owners that just got destroyed. The, what's the definition of a weak hand has just exploded, putting a lot of downward pressure on price. And this is the battle we're seeing uh, come out now. It's why my, 2000, uh, my prediction of $15,000 by May of 2015 didn't come to fruition. We, we fell short. I mean, it hit 14000 almost a year ago now. but. Um, uh, it's because of this balance. The number of weak hands has just exploded. So we see this battle. Short term, I don't know if Bitcoin is going to go um, up or down. I'm not sure if, if the number of weak hands has, has uh, ex gone up significantly enough to, to overpower the number of strong hands trying to accumulate for the halving. My, I suspect it actually will. And we're going to see more of it. We'll see, um, we'll see 
the economy get worse, the, the number of people in the pool of weak hands explodes, the definition of being a weak hand will explode as the rest of the economy um, heads south. And I think we may see lower prices in Bitcoin. I'm not certain of that, but I think we may see lower prices of Bitcoin. But it, regardless of how that happens, the worse the economy goes, the short term thing is that the, the, the Bitcoin price goes down. But the worse the economy goes, the higher I raise my expectation of the price Bitcoin will go to um, in two, three, four years. So if you see Bitcoin down in the one to three thousand dollar range, scoop it up with all you can. Just throw the kitchen sink at it is my recommendation to do what you wish. Of course, this is not financial advice. That's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and so man, Bitcoin between one to 3,000, just a couple of years out of what I think Bitcoin is going to do, is just going to be the buy of the century. Uh, even better than the previous Bitcoin buying opportunities, which have been absolutely fantastic. So that is my price prediction of what's going to happen, what the triggers are along the way, and why I think um, we're not too far away, but we may see one more downward leg. There's also another thing. There's two major things that I see um, hit, the, hit the Bitcoin price year after year after year after year. One is January. January is traditionally a horrible month in the Bitcoin price. I believe the year ends, people start working with their accountants, they realize their tax bill. Hmm, I got to spend, I got to maybe I have to sell a bit of Bitcoin to uh, pay my tax bill. The other is April, which is when the, your tax bill, with the exception of this year, is normally due. It's like I actually have to sell my Bitcoin to get the money to pay my tax bill. January and April, two months that are traditionally not very good for, for Bitcoin. In the US economy, if you don't know, um, they have a delayed your, your tax bill. They, so it's not due now for I think three or four months after it's normally due. And so we may see that normal April horrible month transferred it forward a few months and we might see the price get hit a little bit harder then. So again, there's a chance the price might go down. If it does, scoop it up with all your might because it's, we're not long now from the next incredible bull run for Bitcoin where prices go absolutely ballistic. Guys, let me know if you agree with my, my analysis here. Let me know the parts you don't agree. Either way, please subscribe if you thought the content was great and please share it. Um, and I've had about a thousand subscribers join the channel in the last uh, month. So welcome to all the new guys. Love having you here. You can really help me out. I don't ask for Patreon. I don't let, I don't monetize the videos. So you don't have to sit through those annoying ads. Um, I don't want your money. It's, the time is not right for that. The way you can help me while you're sitting at home um, in quarantine, share this video with people who you think it can impact their lives and uh, give me those likes and comments. Let's start a discussion and welcome to the community. Love to see you guys and I'll see you in the next video.